What's up, guys? So today, we're going to talk about tomatoes. Mmm. Delicious. So, there's a lot of confusion, I find, when it comes to tomatoes and how do you properly grow them. Alright? So, what I want to address today is here at Permaculture Northeast, how we grow our tomatoes and how we actually get a, a harvest of, a, so far this year, literally thousands of tomatoes off of 270 square feet. And so we're talking cherry tomatoes mainly, but we've got uh, some others as you will see in a moment. Uh, just how we get a massive yield off of a very small area. So let's go take a look at where we grow our tomatoes. All right, so we are here at our main garden area, our main fenced-in garden. And we have some of the cherry tomatoes ripening at this time of year. And we've also got some other stuff here. we got a bean plant that's already past its prime. But generally, when people are talking about tomatoes, they'll have a single-stalked plant. You know, you go in, you plant your tomato plant, and as it grows up, it grows as this kind of vine... And you end up training it to grow vertical, and then you take off what's called suckers. So as a tomato vine grows, it'll send out shoots in between the leaves and the main stem. And like here, right? Here's a sucker. So you have the main stem, you have a leaf, kind of a compound leaf there, and then you have this little sucker that'll grow into a whole nother branch. Now a lot of people will tell you, you know, just take that supper off, or take that sucker off, and, you know, just kind of discard that. And that'll train your tomato vine to grow vertical. And then you'll get periodical, or periodic clusters of tomatoes that later on you can come through, clip off, and there you have a tomato harvest. However, if you do that, you end up getting very neat, very healthy tomato vines. I mean, you don't end up getting much in damaged leaves or, or mold or fungus or anything. Um, you get really healthy vines, you get pretty good yields in quality, but you don't really get much in yields when it comes to quantity. And so let's kind of zoom out and look at our tomato patch here. And that all is our tomato patch. And to be frank, this is the biggest downside is it looks like a mess. Anyone coming to your garden will say, wow, that looks hideous. Now let's kind of step back and give you a little bit of a size of what we're talking about here. So here, as we go lengthwise along the garden fence, that is our 15 feet. And then as we track that way, kind of along where that boat is back there, that's 18 feet. And so that's our 270 square feet of garden space. And in it we have all of our tomato plants. So here's a Juliet tomato, kind of a mild acidity, really great grapeish tomato. We've got a Catulpa tree, kind of a biomass accumulator. A horseradish plant, some corn, as you've seen scattered through there. And then we've got just masses of tomato vines. We've got tomato vines up here. We got a, a mulberry tree coming in and growing in here. We got tomato vines coming into the path. Another mulberry tree kind of marking the corner of our 270 feet. And then we have some of the larger tomatoes kind of growing in there. A lot of ones that have fallen. The pepper plant that didn't do so hot. We've got some lamb's quarters growing in and it's currently going to flower and seed. We've got some grape tomatoes in there. And then further back in and amongst the corn is more and more cherries. I don't mind stepping on the vines, however horrible that sounds. Because as we come up here, I just wanna show you guys just how many tomatoes we're getting. So on a single weekend, I'll come up and get uh, 500 plus tomatoes and so like right here I've got six seven ish once that guy ripens up seven tomatoes 
and then, you know, cluster, 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 all of them, and then we've still got tons of green ones coming in. A lot of green ones. We've still got, let me find it, you know, the flowers are still coming in. We've got tons of insects, plenty of pollination. Almost all of our tomato flowers are getting pollinated. As you can see, we've got really nice clusters. And that is all over this place, tons and tons of clusters of cherry tomatoes. And so while we're getting, you know, this kind of ugly mess of tomato vines, we are getting massive yields of tomatoes. So let me go ahead and flip the camera around here. Okay, so, you know, what's my recommendation then when it comes to growing tomatoes? Uh, quite honestly, you know, if I can, we got a cluster of tomatoes here. Find one that's mostly ripe. Uh, you know, if I can grow a lot of tomatoes, that means more to me than having, you know, maybe a pristine garden growing a tenth or a hundredth of the amount of tomatoes. Now, I'm not going to have a, a tomato bed like this, ideally, maybe right by my front door or right by an entranceway where a lot of people are coming through and then, I don't know, they may look at it and say, oh, you know, this is part of permaculture? This sucks. Like, I don't want to do permaculture. But when I, when I come and I get my harvests and, uh, and I show people the amount of tomatoes we're getting. I don't care how it looks because they're not seeing how it looks. <laughs> you know, if they come out and they see it, I'll say, sure, it looks like this, but look at the yields we're getting. And so I've wondered, you know, do I put a lot of effort into staking up the tomato plants, getting really tall tomato vines, but then only getting a few clusters per plant throughout the growing season? Or do I just keep doing this and you know, just kind of relegate a certain section of the garden to tomatoes to let them go wild. I think I'm going to stick with uh, the wild method, you know. A lot of them do go bad, uh, to be honest. So we get a lot of ones that um, will fall off or fall to the ground or get a few bug bites or stuff like that. And the leaves aren't all pretty and pristine, but still, the yields speak for themselves. I kind of keep going back to that. The yields speak to themselves. And so... And that's kind of self-evident to me. Now, when it comes to next year, honestly, I don't need to replant these tomatoes at all. The, the large ones will reseed themselves. The cherries will reseed themselves. We've had tomatoes there growing for years. And, I mean, even before we really started switching into a permaculture method, and they kept coming back. And the question was, oh, well, will the, will the seeds catch up and sprout in time uh, here in, uh, I think we're 6B, USDA growing zone, will the seeds sprout and produce in time, or are we better to start with starts from the store? And every single year, we plant the starts, and while the seeds, you know, the seedlings are really small, but the seedlings always come up and grow to the size of the ones that we bought, and even surpass them. So... We're, uh, yeah, we, we probably won't buy any cherry tomatoes next year and just see what we get. We're also taking a lot of the bad cherry tomatoes since they reseed themselves so easily. We're taking a lot of bad ones and we're throwing them in and amongst hedgerows and uh, in and amongst, you know, places where they might grow next year. And we'll see if we get some wild cherry tomatoes, which would be pretty cool. So anyway, that is, I gotta keep eating these things. That is how we're growing thousands of tomatoes, literally. I'm, I got 550 one weekend, like 600 another. That right there is over 1,000. And um, yeah, thousands of tomatoes on 270 square feet. Pretty incredible. And so thanks for all of our subscribers out there. Keep checking us out. Give us a thumbs up if you like this content. And uh, I'll catch you guys around. So see ya.